Hi there, Stephanie here. I want to talk a little bit about a topic I hear in discussion quite often these days, and that is the science of learning. I think some people might be a little bit confused in assuming that the science of learning is not part of the science of reading. So for me, the science of learning is a broad body of evidence about human learning. It is much broader than just reading. It includes all human learning, how we acquire new understandings, new knowledge and skills, even if it's not an academic topic, even if it is something related to a behavioral outcome, how we move information from short-term or what some people call working memory into long-term memory, how we recall information that we have learned previously. These are all topics related to what educational psychologists study, what cognitive psychologists study, and in some ways, what folks in neurology also are investigating. So the science of learning is this broad body of, of information, research on human learning. The science of reading is a subset of that. And I think the specific overlap and relationship has to do with the component of the science of reading that is about how we learn. So I think about the definition of the science of reading that's in the defining guide and how it explicitly states that it's not just about what we are learning related to reading, what students need to learn, but it's how they best learn those aspects of reading. And, and what teachers need to know about the how part, the instructional component. So I think it's really problematic when people constrain the science of reading to, in some cases, even in state legislation, I see this, just the big five, right? The phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, fluency, and reading comprehension. Clearly, the science of reading is much more vast body of evidence that goes beyond the what we teach and includes how we teach as well. So hopefully this is just a, a caution, I guess, that people are not thinking that the science of learning is the new shiny object. Hopefully you're not thinking now we need legislation around the science of learning. Hopefully you're not thinking now we need a committee in our district to talk about implementing the science of learning. I, I do hope that people are expanding their understanding, perhaps through the science of reading, that there are aspects of human learning that apply across all subjects in schools, including the social behaviors that we want students to be learning, uh, and that perhaps you're expanding your conversations about research-informed teaching practices that can support learning of all things in schools. So I thought I would share a couple of resources. I have them highlighted here, a few of them out here on my bookshelf, some resources that I would point you to. There are some excellent articles and publications from American Federation of Teachers by Paul Kirshner and John Sweller. I think they are some of the most easy to understand and comprehensive resources on human learning, on cognition, on things like short-term and long-term memory, retrieval, and so forth. I would also encourage you to check out the publications by Daniel Willingham. He has many excellent journal publications, webinars, and also publications on the AFT website that are very easy to, to read and to understand. Uh, I like his Outsmart Your Brain book. I think it has particular implications for instruction for K-12 teachers, but also for university instructors. Other resources that are re relevant to instruction and university instructors include how teaching happens and how learning happens. Those are two compilations of various papers that are related to teaching and learning. So they're brief, very accessible, both of those books. And then two more recent publications that I want to draw your attention to include Harnessing the Science of Learning by Nathaniel Swain and Just Tell Them by Zach Groeschel. Those are two very recent publications that get at this instructional piece, especially Zach Groeschel's book. 
So keeping in mind that there are elements of the science of reading that are specific to how we teach, delivering what we know works best for novices, for people who are struggling to learn new content, when that content is high stakes, that we are teaching in ways that make it more likely for the learning to happen. So if this is interesting to you, if you are having these conversations in your school or district or university setting, let's talk about this. Drop some comments below and let's have a discussion here.